Now, let's go back to uh, Syria, because Russia has condemned extremist attempts there to disrupt a vital UN humanitarian mission to Aleppo. Uh, these are some of the recent pictures we received from the main humanitarian supply line to West Aleppo. And you can see here there are overturned trucks and food scattered across the road. Previously, terrorists also cut off water pipes, too, going into the region. Artie's Lizzie Phelan looks now at some of the heroic attempts, though, to change the situation in Aleppo. Water, the foundation of life, has become one of the most powerful weapons of the war in Syria. In Aleppo, where there's a huge shortage, men like Ala al Said risk their lives crossing deadly front lines to make sure people in all parts of the city have access to water. Water comes to Aleppo from the Euphrates, from a station which is currently under ISIL control. Because the government cannot provide electricity to the water pumping stations, we are dependent on diesel generators to provide electricity to them. Our role is to coordinate with all sides to take the diesel to pumping stations, and we monitor the use of diesel because under the agreement those groups are not allowed to use the diesel for anything other than making the pumps work. Most families can only afford 200 litre tanks of water like this one every two weeks or so. The water is collected from scores of government-run distribution points in the western part of the city it controls. But as the electricity supply which water pumps depend on becomes even even more erratic with renewed fighting in the south of the city, the supply to these centers can be unpredictable. There has been no electricity in the city for 29 days because the main electricity cables were cut due to the clashes around the city. We need a ceasefire long enough so that the cables can be repaired, get the essential electricity to make the water pumps work. To reduce the dependence on water coming from pumps controlled by groups like ISIL and the formerly named Al-Nusra Front, the Syrian government has drilled wells to tap into the underground water supply. But experts say that that water is contaminated with high levels of nitrates. Today we met a 25-year-old Aleppo University student, Mohammed, who's developed a potential solution to more than just Aleppo's water crisis. Because of the terrorist attacks on the water pumps in Aleppo, we needed a solution. After analyzing underground water in Aleppo, we have found it is contaminated with nitrates that cause cancer and blood problems. He came up with this simple water purifying machine that costs approximately $100. Mohammed says one cubic meter of water can be filtered from nitrates for just nine cents. There's an Arabic expression that says necessity is the mother of invention. So the necessity for water to be purified because of the crisis in Aleppo motivated me to do this. Mohammed is just one of many examples we've encountered of Syrians here in Aleppo finding ingenious ways to survive and maybe one day help others. Lizzie Phelan in Aleppo, Farati. Finally, this hour, two U.S. Marines who decided to go on a round-the-world tour after completing their military training in Germany were left a bit embarrassed after part one of the trip didn't exactly go to plan. It's easily done, I'm sure it is. You're watching RT International. More news in about half an hour's time. Up next, though, you can find out why the historic transatlantic trade deal, TTIP as it's called, might end in failure. That's discussed next in Boom Bust.